Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. The lighting is getting slightly better as the sun goes down over Manhattan uh, behind me. And uh, we're, making, we're making another answer question. User, YouTube user Pamaroon has asked another question and I thought it was a very good question. And I'm, not, I'm gonna paraphrase here, I don't have the exact question in front of me, but does, the question goes, does the sexual orientation of a plaintiff's employment attorney matter? And that's a complex question, right? Because we're in a field where it's really well known um, employment defense attorneys, especially you know attorneys who are defending sexual harassment, there's a lot of data, a lot of studies, a lot of um, reason to believe that if um, a defendant is a male who's, who's been accused of sexual harassment, it would behoove that, that male defendant very much to have female attorneys at the table defending them, right? That is kind of a known thing. There's a lot of data to reflect that. And there's some, there's some data to reflect that um, Often in workplace discrimination cases, um, and this is disappointing. This is disappointing. So, you know, it, it makes me sad for America, for the U.S. Um, there's some data to reflect that, like Caucasian plaintiffs' attorneys representing uh, persons of color who are plaintiffs in workplace discrimination cases, um, there could be some correlation of better results there. And um, I don't feel great even saying that, but that, but listen, that information's out there, and I, and I raise it kind of as as this issue of in our field we have a lot of demographic information, where we know factors about attorneys can matter, quite a bit, quite a bit, right? And listen, stuff like that, like our field, it needs more women, it needs more persons of color, it needs more minorities, um, in our field, and. Um, if you're coming for representation from a plaintiff's attorney, it shouldn't be that you have a difficult time finding an attorney who doesn't look like the problem, right? That's not ideal. I'm sure there are many women who have come in to get help with a sexual harassment case, took a look at me and say, I don't know about you, you look a little bit like that guy who did the thing, and I don't blame them, right? Who wants to be um, alone in a, uh, in a room with a guy when you've just been sexually harassed and you're feeling a variety of things, which I probably can't even fully empathize with, right? So all of these things matter. Representation matters. Choice matters. Our field does not have good representation yet. Um, there's just not enough representation in our field. And frankly, defense firms run around making wild salary offers to female attorneys and, and to attorneys who are, you know, minority attorneys, trying to get them to go to fence side so they can will sit at the table with the bad people or the people who are accused, the alleged bad people, and um, help them in terms of jury perception, right? And that's, that's what this whole conversation is kind of about, jury perception. So... When you're asking me if orientation matters, um, yeah, maybe from a representation standpoint, first and foremost, but there's more than that, right? Like, um, I have a friend, a very close friend I went to law school with, who is a, a very famous criminal attorney, right? He represents people. If I gave you the list of some of his clients, his more famous clients, you'd be like, oh my God, this guy, did they make a movie about him? Is he still alive? Do they call him Lord of War? Like what? What's going on, right? And I'll tell you what. I, I think, whether or not he's out, in terms of expressing his sexual orientation to the world, depends on the client. Right? That's the world he lives in. That's what he has to do. And some people might be like, "Well, that's very dishonest." No, it's not. He is an amazing criminal defense attorney. And um, his sexual orientation is not your business. Unless you're dating or trying to date this person, even if you're trying to date him, he's not. If, if you two are having a mutually consensual conversation about maybe dating or something, okay, now it's your business maybe, right? 
Before that, no, it's none of your business. It doesn't matter. Like it's, what, why do you want to know? You know, but, but he made this decision to not be in his professional life out. And that is a response to the world and the way the world is today, right? So, okay, let's bring it back to employment law, right? Um, I do think sexual orientation matters for employment attorneys for more than just the issue of representation, right? Um, I have had a lot of clients make assumptions about my sexual orientation. And sometimes they ask me. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, that's, I mean, I don't really talk about that. Um, but your assumption is incorrect. And they'll say, are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, jerk. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I live, I live in this body almost 40, 40 years. I, I feel like I know, okay? So, who, who would ask that? And that's happened to me multiple times in my career. Are you sure? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Come on. Um, so people, I think, have a tendency to want me to be the sexual orientation that they uh, assume about me because that would make me less threatening to them when they're alone in a room with me or um, because they've recently had really bad experiences with one orientation. Like there's, there's all these reasons. There's, it's so many varied and complex reasons why that could be the case. <sighs> so I mean, the answer is yes. Sexual orientation of an employment attorney does matter. Um, but I also don't know too many employment attorneys whose orientations are like, out. Like if you're working for Lambda Legal, yeah, I feel like there's a good chance you might feel comfortable sharing your orientation. Certainly, you're doing important work <laughs> and you might feel comfortable, right? But um, I don't know how many just, you know, plaintiff side employment attorneys really disclose that information. Um, it's pretty personal and I don't know, it's pretty personal for some people, I should say. Other people want it to be, you know, out there and that's their choice. That's their call. It's their life. It's their career. They're, they're making the choices here, right? Uh, I will also say for defense attorneys, orientation matters. Um, I can think of at least at one defense firm that has a, uh, an attorney, a gay, a gay deposition attorney that they bring in to um, essentially slut shame gay men when they're trying to bring workplace sexual orientation discrimination cases. Um, just crazy things. It was very early on in my career when I first crossed paths with this, with this gentleman. Um, and uh, like 30 minutes into a deposition, he's asking clients, in my, he's asking my client, he's like, so how many of these guys you sleep with? <laughs> what? I'm like going over the table. You can't ask that. That's got nothing to do with the case. He's like, it, he just keeps going back, right? And his whole thing, his whole thing was trying to get the client upset. And I ended up ending the deposition. I was like, this is completely inappropriate. We're not doing this. We couldn't get the judge on the phone. Like, go to war. Like, end the deposition, walk out, whatever. Because my client was getting angry because this jerk was basically trying to play the game of like, I'm gay, you're gay, so like, I'm gonna slut shame you, and I'm gonna get away with it because I'm also gay. And it's like, that's not, there's no free passes for inappropriate conduct during a deposition, right? So, the, <laughs> um, it's wild stuff, right? If, if a defense firm can do something like that, I mean, we can all name a few very prominent female attorneys who go on network news and slut shame claimants. She was asking for it, right? There's women who do that. That is the job of certain, certain women who work in the employment defense field. It's their job. It's a big part of what they do in the courtroom 
and on television. Controlling that narrative. Is that easy to watch? No. Because I know them. And I would otherwise think they're good people. But wow! Wow! Right? Um, so, yeah, I think orientation matters, in short. And uh, this video is 11 minutes long almost now. So, I hope I answer your question. Like and subscribe. Helps me to help more people just like you. Comment down below if I didn't answer. I can try to clarify. And uh, thank you for the questions, Pameroon.